Hi everyone. So this is week two of our three weeks of doing these beautiful soul to soul connections. So um, we've put all the names in a hat of everybody who uh, volunteered to have a reading with me and Nick's picked out some names. He's going to do that each week. There's actually quite a few of you, so I'm not going to get around to everybody in the three weeks. So I am going to do some additional Facebook Lives, which I'll give you some notice about uh, when they're going to be. So some of you can join me on those if you want to, just so that I can actually uh, supply this connection for, for more than these three YouTubes allow. OK, so watch out for those if you're on Facebook as well. OK, so we start with David, David S. And you've actually uh, asked for these cards, the power of love cards, Dave. OK, so um, basically what I'm doing here is using oracle cards and tarot cards as a way of connecting in from my higher self to your higher self. Uh, we're connected in this way all of the time because we're, we're all part of this one great big soup of, <laughs> of life and energy. And so we're picking things up from each other all of the time. I was reading a, an article the other day uh, by a psychologist to say, you know, a lot of these things, um, when we meet people and we get feelings about them, we're reading them. You know, we're reading their body language, the way they're looking. There's a, there's a, a lot can, that can be explained when you're in the room with somebody about uh, how we can actually read people and have those connections. And then there's um, another layer, which is the one we're doing now, where um, Nick's just written out some names of people I don't know, never met before, have no background with whatsoever. I just have a name and I'm connecting in through our higher selves and your highest. I just open myself up like I do with connections and sessions with everybody every time. And then I'm delivering messages really from your higher self to my higher self. And then I'm interpreting those as best I possibly can. And I am attempting to get better at that as I go along because the information is correct. It's just often our interpretation. And I think that's true of all of us, isn't it? You know, it's like, oh, like when you receive a text or a message from someone, you can interpret that in 10 million different ways. Um, but if you're with somebody and you're talking to them or even on on Zoom or something, you, you get much more of a better idea of their meaning if you're listening to the tone and seeing their body behavior. So it's similar in this really, it's an interpretation of the information you get. So I shall do my best for you and I'm sure, please let me know in the comments field below what you think. Um, and yeah, if it's been of any assistance for you, it would be good to know. Okay, so Dave, yours is, and this is like, a snapshot moment of what you need to know right here in the now. So you've pulled a card called Harmony and the card says you are able to feel a loving, balanced connection with everything. So so it really, so that's what the card says and picking up on those words Dave, it's almost like you have the ability to do that and you've always had the ability to do that and you can go really calm through any choppy waters. You can actually have that calm state, that connected, connected and sort of like a bigger awareness of life in general. Um, you've always had that and you can continue to have that. But there's a bit of a, I'm sensing that there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a ripple in that peacefulness, in that, in that connect, connection um, with universal life force. There's a bit of a ripple coming in at the moment and it's, it's sort of trying to get your awareness. So it's almost like 
um, an irritation, like you feel irritated by it or you're, which, you know, you're being a little bit more frustrated or irritated or a bit off in some way. Those words might be too strong for you, but they're, it's, it's as if you're uncomfortable, you know, and that's your awareness telling you that something is trying to get your attention. That's something that's trying to get your attention is something that you don't really want to look at. <laughs> your higher self is very clear about that point. <laughs> It's like one of those things, you know, when you've got to do the paperwork and perhaps you're not the person who likes the paperwork or you've got to attend to this or go there or do that. And it's like, mm, there's a bit of resistance in there or you just don't want to do it. It's kind of along the same lines. But this is going to get stronger and stronger and you'll have to spend more time uh, attending to it. So have a little just search in your environment and your awareness have a think of different people just ask your intuitive self what is it what is it that carol's waffling on about that's trying to get to me into my awareness that i can attend to now and just kind of suck it up and get on with it and do the thing so that you can return to your peaceful existence or apply that peacefulness to that ripple that's out there. It's a ripple coming from a person who's discontented, okay? So the origin of this ripple is somebody who gets, wow, a bit more fired up and, and, and sort of like uh, emotionally... Um, whatever that was that just came through me. So so very emotional, but, but lots of fire in them. It's somebody who's quite fiery and goes off at the tent at the drop of a hat and, and explodes, you know? And then um, it's not like somebody who explodes and then they're free of it and then they come back down again. Um, it's almost somebody that's a little bit out of balance uh, with themselves at the moment. And that energy is coming towards you. So it's worth turning towards it now, your higher self is saying, and keeping in your space, your natural space as much as possible, attending to that. It's almost like putting out the fires before it catches in the wood, in the forest. It's a kind of a bit of a heads up that's going on there. And I know you can feel it. I know you know it's there, but just sort of to keep this harmony going, it's saying, can you attend to it now, please? And then you wanted an Earth Magic card to talk to you about what's coming after that or alongside it. Do you know, you told me it was a tsunami straight away and tsunamis actually come out. Okay, so um, this feels, this feels feels quite large, quite powerful, and it feels as if you didn't attend to it. It kind of has that feel to it. So if Dave attends to it now, you know, as soon as possible, as soon as you've heard this and as soon as it's absolutely possible, what comes beyond that? So beyond that, you get the Spring Equinox card, which is all about rebirth, and you get the Dragonfly card, which is all about emergence. So when, when you get powerful things brewing like this, when you get things like a tsunami card to say, you know, if you don't deal with it, it's going to grow from a, a sort of a brook, a gentle waters in a brook to a tsunami kind of thing. It's often to do with something that your soul and you have signed up to do. It's often like quite a big change. It's quite a um, the benefits are great once we've gone through it and attended to it. So the benefits that you'll get once you've attended to it are these two, which is basically emergence and rebirth. So yeah, so there's a definite feeling of please attend to this as soon as possible, please. <laughs> it would make me feel better, let alone... Yeah, there you go. You've got the message. It's funny for me when I know I've just said you've got the message and I'm just recording this now and, you know, it's not going out till Friday. So 
how on earth can, how on earth can you get it? But I always get that feeling of when the message has been heard in some way that I've um, got the right message and it's come across in that way. I'm just sharing all this with you because I know a lot of you are interested in divining some truths from yourself through cards and I've got some um, past recorded, you know, reading the oracle cards for yourself um, from a beginner's and then an advanced point of view. So they're also there if you need those. But <clears throat> by explaining this, it might help along the way. Okay, Dave? <laughs> okay, so our next person is Janet, Janet A. This is for you, Janet. And um, you went straight for these. These are the angel tarot cards. And we'll see what your higher self has to say about that. So just going to leave your card there for a minute because it feels as though I might have to reshuffle that after we've had a chat. We shall see what else comes up. Okay, so... The word dichotomy is coming up for you, Janet. It's like, it's like you've got a choice, crossroads, there you go, thank you. You've got like a, <laughs> almost a three-laned crossroad that's come up. It's sort of like one lane, which is like expected, which is <laughs> the norm, which is, is da -da 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 -da. and that one feels really quite ba -dum -ba -dum, like ploddy and, um, I lose quite a lot of energy going that road. And then there's another road which you cannot see. You don't know. It's like a windy, it's a windy, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's not, that one's a straight road. You can see quite a way down that one, but you lose energy, you feel tired even thinking about it. And then this one is full of possibilities, but you just can't see what's around the corner. And then there's another one over here that's saying choose me choose me choose me which is which is kind of like a shorter road it's a shortcut it's um it's it's like a move which is near short it's kind of like safe it feels with ease it feels great um and it's almost like you're not allowing yourself to look at that because it's so easy can I just explain that sometimes things are easy um, for you and for your friend and the other friend and for me and, and for, for David or, or whoever, but they're not necessarily easy for other people. So we all have our own qualities of ease and what we consider easy is very, very, very much required now. Mother Earth again is talking about this year of being about adulting about being you know our own adult our own empowerment so we can make wonderful choices in our lives but sometimes we're pre-programmed to prove to ourselves quite early on in life that we have to take the hard road because if we take the hard road we prove to ourselves we are worthy that paradigm's disappeared. What's here now is a request for us all to take the easy road, only if it feels really good. Like, for instance, that example there that you've given me, if we went down this road that is expected, there's this, and that, oh, do you know, I feel like I've just, I want to go to sleep. I've lost so much energy when I'm looking at that <sighs> possibility. Yes, it's easy to walk it, but it doesn't suit you at all. This one, ooh, it's a bit exciting. This one's like, come on, <laughs> we're in holiday mode, the water's fine, it's like, come on in. Just because it e it's easy doesn't mean it's not right, okay? So some decisions going on at the moment, Janet, and they're just pointing out, you're just pointing out your higher self that just really include that easy one, include it, because actually right now it's the right thing. And I feel like it's a stepping stone one. It feels like, you know, go that route and really enjoy it. You might choose this one later on, or you might even choose that one later on. But right now, this one's okay. So you get a major arcana. With any tarot cards, there's always a major arcana, which are um, 
which is a set of its own really and it's very powerful so it's like take note of this and then there's a minor arcana which has got lots more cards in it um both are great and i like shuffling them all together <laughs> which of course you would know so life experience archangel chamuel a significant life event i feel that this that you're showing me now this choice is a significant life event a powerful revelation that leads to change. <laughs> Time to spread your wings. Okay, that's your card. So that's life experience. Yeah. I go on this holiday, if I really, this, oh, well, the one that feels like a holiday, it really does feel like gone are the days when you need to really trudge it through, you know, and do all that's expected of you. It's a time of, you know, next year, there's a big word over next year called freedom. It's a big freedom stuff. If we've managed to actually um, brought into reality the concept of adulting now. And so, you know, as adults, we need to have joy, we need to have fun, we need to have easier times. And your higher self is saying, please, please count that option in. Okay, tell me. Let me know what you're thinking. Okay, so this is for Andy. Andy A, this is for you. Oh, you're going straight for Angels and Ancestors by Kyle Gray. Okay, Andy, um, it's okay to be knackered, you know. We've been through some amazing, amazing, amazing times. And, you know, I said last week, and I'll say it again now and hopefully remember next week, we've all been through tremendous transformations and we ha we're going to have more more transformations are coming through. And in my way of trying to explain it, you know, we're, we're a three-legged stool and there's three different types of energies that are coming in. One from the third dimension, which is the general five senses that we live. One is the fourth dimension, which is compassionate action to self and others. And the fifth dimension is all about what we're doing now here, mind melding, sort of connective abilities, telepathy, working as a team, so on and so forth, working with the unseen realms. When we are trying to attend to 3D normal, normal life to um, do things in the old paradigm way, it's exhausting sometimes because the energy is supporting fourth and fifth. So this is what your higher self wants us to talk about today is, you know, and it's about, it's about making sure you drink from the well of spirit on the fourth dimension, the compassionate action for self. So going out in nature, smelling the new scents that are coming out from the flowers, looking at the cloud movement, connecting in with the elements. It's quite important for you to make sure that's a daily activity and kind of especially at the moment for the next 12 days, try not to be distracted from not having that for yourself. That's really, really, really important. Everybody benefits if you do that. And um, it's like, when you do that, you allow yourself to drop in to that fourth dimension and that fifth dimension. And so therefore you can notice the kind of ribbons of light that are coming through at the moment. And therefore it energizes this 3D bit. It's almost like we're all walking around and it's taken a bit longer to heal at the moment than it used to do. It's taken, everything's taking a bit longer and planning for the future just isn't holding out. We have to do things quite spontaneously so like on your walks, go on your normal walks, but then go spontaneously off the path. Because there's treasures there waiting for you to see from a different perspective. And it's a different perspective that your higher self is saying, let's go this way, let's go that way. You know, um, I don't know, pop up here and, and, and go for a walk around the woods. It's like 
it's like just go somewhere go somewhere different you know our walks our walks are lovely in nature but nature's all around us whether it's on housing estates or not you can find absolutely wonderful treasures just in the hedgerows and uh, the many different places I know you know to find so um, be okay to be tired you know put that into into life in general if you're tired you're tired so do less of the things that are tiring do more of the things that can bring you joy but definitely it's a, a prerequisite for the next 12 days at least when you get this message that's day one of making sure those daily walks are in place because it's your way of drinking from the well of spirit okay and your card is wise one grow within your current situation looks like the crone here we've got a beautiful raven and the owl and moon that's your card Andy yeah I feel this is to come I don't feel you're there yet this is more like um in the crone energy I mean this is more like um you know there's wisdom in those connections there's a lot of wisdom in those connections when you're out there in nature and to be able even if it's a few minutes a day to be able to breathe in that participation of the wild places helps to remind you of your wild self and um, the wild things you're dreaming into place Okay, and with that, it says it's bringing in stag energy for you. If you do this thing, the benefit is stag energy, which is trusting more and thriving. So this is just temporary, this tiredness at the moment. You know, there are times to thrive, but you can regenerate by being out in nature. Okay, Andy, let me know what you think. And... Next pulled Hannah F. So this is for Hannah F. And woo, you're going straight for the fairies, Hannah. The fairy tarot cards. Let's see what they have to say to you. Okay, so you want to go straight to the card rather than anything else. So this is number 21, Major Arcana again. You've got the world. A brilliant success. Whatever you're thinking of doing right now is a brilliant success. The freedom to go in any direction <laughs> a journey that is now complete that's your card Hannah. i also get with this like you've shifted through and decluttered in your life various options that were there before that you've outgrown it feels like this success is coming from trying new things um taking on new concepts and it feels like uh, stuff that you used to do a long time ago. You've outgrown, really, and you've recognized that now in yourself and you can free yourself of, of um, you know, we all go through phases in life where we outgrow people, we outgrow situations, we outgrow jobs, we outgrow roles in life, really. And some of them are harder to extricate ourselves from than others. And this is just saying, well done, because you've done all the hard work. It's done. You're now on a successful way forward. Um, and it's also really saying to me, the world card, number 21, like your, your options are only going to get wider and you're going to have lots of things coming for you, to you, um, that you can consider. But... Matilda's just come in, um, my guide who calls the spade a bloody shovel. So she's come in and she's saying, you know, when all these things come in, <laughs> run it by your joy center. It's getting a bit of a theme here. Run it by your joy center. Run it by that. Just, just make sure you run it by your heart and run it by your, your belly. Just check within you that this is actually right for you before you move forward. 
So it fits all parts of how you believe yourself to be. Okay, so check within your own, your own joy center. Is this going to be more joyful? What's it going to be? Is it going to be good for me? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it true? Run it by that first before you say yes, because there's so many options coming your way that it's, it's going to be, you know, you're going to need to choose which ones are best. So Matilda says, run it by the joy center and then you'll know. Okay, Hannah? See how you could feel with that. And next we've got one for Charlie. Charlie S. This is for you. And you've gone straight for the spirit animal cards. Collect Baron Reed. Oh my goodness me. Charlie. Whoo, this is the energy, okay, that I'm getting from you. It's like, wow, what, what a what a few, what what a seven years. What what it's not just a few years, it's like, um, it's like you're looking and going, wow, I'm doing well to be here and be my powerful, wonderful self. I am doing really well to be in the room, having gone through as much as I've gone through. And that needs honouring and witnessing. Your higher self is saying, yes, it needs to be honoured and witnessed, honoured and witnessed. And it's like you can be your own witnesser, but you can also have other people to witness it for you. So I'm witnessing that for you. Yes, woohoo, well done. <laughs> Question is now, how do you change that? So your higher self is saying, we want some changes, we want big changes, we want important changes, and how do we make those changes? So this card is Antelope Spirit, the one that you've pulled in answer to that. And it says life is speeding up. Well, you need a breath of fresh air. So, so the first thing that comes through very, very, very strongly, well, besides your card of things speeding up, is to get out and mix with some people. You know, it's really, really important for you now to actually gently mix with people so that your sensitivity can get acclimatized to that. But it's to go out and have some fun. It's like you need some girly time out. You need some men time out. You need some rumply bumply. You need, you need <laughs> a whole tapestry of uh, different experiences, Charlie. <laughs> and you can do it. So you go get it, girl. There's nobody stopping you from doing that. You just, you deserve it all. It's time to go and taste that banquet of choices in life and be really happy in your engagement with it, your ability to engage with that. That's what you've earned. That's what all this last seven years has been about. Get to the magic, enjoy the magic. So one of the ways forward, so your higher self just said the next card's gonna bring forward one of the ways forward. It's almost like, if you imagine you're a wizard and you've got, a staff, you know, like Gandalf with his, his stick, which is a staff of magical power of things that are um, combined with you. It's like, what are the things underpinning all of these activities that keep you on track now that you're emerging and going out in the world? And it's number 22, which is Serafina's number for a start off. It's a master number about psychic development and about mastering your life. It's Dragonfly Spirit and it says truth transcends illusion, illusion. So as long as you keep to your truth, OK, number 22, as long as you keep to your truth, you keep to your truth, you keep things as truthful as you possibly can within your own honor code, then nobody's gonna pull the wool over your eyes and you'll see beyond all of the illusions. So keep with your own honorable truth code and that is a lovely protection in itself. Okay, Dan, let me know how you go with that. And <laughs> Angie, you're the next one, Angie J. Right, you're going over here to the power of love cards, but you're also doing a bit of earth magic. So I feel like we need to mix these up. So 
So from the Power of Love pack, it says ownership. You acknowledge your misdeeds and accomplishments, accomplishments alike and learn to love them all as lessons. So I feel as though you have you have acknowledged some accomplishments, but I don't think you have given yourself enough kudos. I don't think you've actually owned how much you've actually done and how how amazing that is. So to me, this is more about balance that up a bit more, you know, pat yourself on the back a bit more, go for it. And then um, you've pulled a card from the Earth Magic, which is stone people, and it's a message of vigilance. So if we have a look at the picture, you've got beautiful, what looks like granite stones rising out of um, the waters of the world and a beautiful blue sky with white clouds. And it looks very calm, looks very calm. So these two together are about making sure you honour yourself. Make sure you are vigilant about um, your inner landscape. So thoughts that you're telling yourself, things that you're telling yourself. You know, be kind to yourself, be generous to yourself. And it's like everybody has negative thoughts. Everybody has negative thoughts about themselves. It's like noticing when they're there and changing them to something else. There is a brilliant, 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 brilliant tool that I've used successfully with lots and lots and lots and lots of people called the Game of Opposites. So there's a video called the Game of Opposites. Do look that up, anybody who's who's watching this, because the Game of Opposites is a life changer. It can get you out of your pits, get you out of your depression, get you out of your dark days easily if you know how to do it. So it's a really good one because it's not difficult, but it's really good to practice it with me because I'm always doing these videos as if you're in the room with me. Go through with it. Make sure you get really, really, really good at it. So if there's a few days where our negative chatter grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, we can actually use the game of opposites to choose, should we choose to use it, it will raise our vibration and we will have access to other thoughts that are kinder and that, that are easier. Just because you mentioned that a little bit there, Angie, I just use that as an example for everybody else that's, that's watching. So thank you for bringing that one up for us. But yeah, just be about vigilant about balancing, balancing this ownership within yourself about acknowledging both the negative and the positive because that's how we learn and that's how we move to unity consciousness is not to ignore bad feelings or to <clears throat> or to uh, think of things really as good or bad but it's about honoring the the lessons and the stories that make up who we are today and uh, whether they've been good bad or indifferent they are they are helping our story and us to evolve. And in our evolution, we become more aware and awake of options. And that's thriving because we get to choose more and more of our own environment and the life that we lead. That we lead. That we lead. <laughs> that we live. <laughs> okay, my loves. So that's it for today. I look forward to receiving your comments. If you want to put those uh, underneath the video, that would be fantastic. I'll reply if you've got any questions. Lots of love. See you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>